Hey now Take a step outside and seize the day now When you come to St. Simon Island, you're gonna wanna know what to see. And we're gonna show you. Now before we show you what to do when you come to St. Simon's Island, it'd be uh, helpful to show you how the island is set up. Now the causeway that brings you into the island is over here and that runs right across and brings you down to the southern part of the island. The village area and pier and where we stayed and the lighthouse is all down here in the southern tip of the island. Now along this side you'll find all the beaches on the Atlantic Ocean and this is where you'll find East Beach and there's multiple points of beach access uh, along this area and the parking is free as a matter of fact the whole island the parking is free now up in the northern area you'll find some of the historic sites like this is where the bloody marsh is this is where the slave cabins are and way up here is where you'll find Fort Federica which is actually a national uh, monument it's a national part of the national park system and in the middle they actually have an airport so it's a private airport, so if you have your own plane, you can fly right in and skip the drive. All right, so let's get into what you can see and do on St. Simon's Island. So one of the best beaches to come to is East Beach, which is a little over a mile from the area of the pier. We're gonna go check it out right now. And there's plenty of free parking and a bathhouse with public restrooms. So this beach is on the east side of uh, St. Simon's Island and uh, is right on the ocean. So and it looks like it's probably like one of the bigger beaches that we've seen so far. I think this will be the main beach to come to if you're staying here for, uh, for the beach. And there's more. So if you stay by the pier, the pier village, um, and you want to go to the beach. Now you can drive to the East Beach, which we showed you yesterday. That's about maybe a 10 minute drive, five minute drive from here. Or you can walk down Beach Avenue and look for some of the beach access and try to go that way. The only thing is you have to go during low tide because during high tide, the beach is pretty much gone if you go uh, down that way from the beach access here at the uh, Pier Village area. So, but we're gonna try to take a walk there now because that's low tide. So we're staying here at the village right across the street from the lighthouse. And you can see all these numbers. These are all the spots for beach access. And it looks pretty generous. There's a lot of them going all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And continue up to uh, East Beach where we were yesterday. And that does have a big parking lot if you want to drive there. And that was probably maybe about a five, 10 minute drive from the village where we're staying. We entered the beach at beach access point number 11. And since it was low tide, there was plenty of beach to walk on. We walked one and a half miles north, which took us all the way to East Beach. And along the way, we passed some beautiful homes. There's some beautiful homes on this beach. But I don't know is if any of them are for rent. Oh, that one is the vacation rental. Oh, there's one there. It says vacation <laughs> rental, as Sue pointed out. This oceanfront property is yours to rent. So we made it from the Village Pier area to East Beach. And East Beach is where we were yesterday. So let's find out from Sue how long the walk was. So Sue, how long was the walk? mile and a half, not bad. All right, so when you come to St. Simon's Island, you gotta come down to what they call the village. Let me show you what's here. Well, first, there's the lighthouse, which you can climb to the top. And then there's this nice walkway that goes all along the water here. It's a beautiful walk along the water here. And again, the lighthouse right there.
There's also a really nice park, playground, and open areas under the trees. There's even outdoor barbecue grills right under this great 200 year old oak. And if you take the walkway from the lighthouse to the end, you'll end up at the pier and also at Mallory Street. Now Mallory Street is the location of many shops, restaurants, and bars and uh, runs up from the pier area. And there's plenty of parking here, but also over by the park, there's parking over there too. And the pier is a great place to go fishing or just to enjoy the view. But also, as we found a couple nights ago, it's a great place to watch the sunset. Take a look. And get this, the parking down at the pier in Mallory Street is always free. And in this area, there's also a welcome center where you can get more information about the island. So when you come to St. Simon's Island, take the time to visit some of the historic sites. And there's no better way to explore the island here than in the spider. We jumped in the spider and drove about 15 minutes north to the Fort Federica National Monument. There's no admission charge and parking is free. Okay, we made it. We're at the Fort Federica National Monument, which is part of the National Park Service. So the significance of this uh, spot is that, um, if you remember, uh, James Oglethorpe, founded Savannah back in the 1700s. After he did that, he realized he needed to do something to protect the city. So at this spot, he actually built um, some fortification to uh, fend off the Spanish, which were just south of here in Florida. Um, so the British were up here under his uh, guidance and down south was uh, uh, the, uh, the Spanish. So we're gonna walk around and see what remains of his community and fort that he built here again to protect Savannah. So this land was actually not just a military post, it was actually a military town and Oglethorpe brought in all the people needed to make a town and it, again this was back in the 1700s and there's, this is an active archaeological site and uh, we're gonna take a walk through this, it's really beautiful. Look at, look at these old live oaks, I mean these are probably 200 years old easily. But there's a visitor center here, there's a movie, information, they give you a map, and then you're free to just uh, do a self-guided tour of the entire area. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is the beginning of the town. This is Broad Street, this was Broad Street. And the town was on the left and the right of Broad Street with the fort on the river straight ahead. So back in the day, this was the main center of town. As you walk down Broad Street on the left and the right, you'll see the foundations of the homes. And on the outskirt of town, you'll see what remains of the soldiers' barracks. And here's a bit of trivia. All the foundations were made with tabby concrete. So this foundation is called tabby, and it's made of sand, lime, and oyster shells and supposedly it's very strong. Now make sure you walk all the way to the end of Broad Street to see what remains of the fort. And here we are at the end of Broad Street and this is where you'll find the fort. So the only thing remaining is a small section of the fort. The original fort was much bigger than this, as shown on this diagram. Now, after Britain and Spain signed a treaty in the late 1700s, the fort was abandoned and this town slowly died. But under this land, there's still some history of the town to be discovered. 
So this site is still an active archaeological site, and uh, they're still digging, looking for artifacts and foundations. Take a look. As you can see, archaeological digs are still occurring here. Hey, that was really interesting. If you like history, you got to come here. So next, we're going to drive over to the Bloody Marsh, which is one of the biggest battles between the British soldiers uh, and uh, the uh, Spanish down south. So let's take a ride over. The Bloody Marsh site is also part of the National Park Service and was about a 10 minute ride from Fort Federica. And there's plenty of free parking. The Battle of the Bloody Marsh occurred between the British and Spanish troops on July 7, 1742. The British were victorious and it was said that the marsh turned red with the blood of the Spanish soldiers. Next up, we drove to the west side of the island to check out the Hamilton Plantation Slave Cabins. This land is owned by the local garden club, and we contacted them and they provided us with a tour. The link to the garden club is below. So these slave cabins behind me that you see uh, were part of the Hamilton Plantation built in the late uh, 1700s and this was the largest cotton plantation here in St. Simons Island. We took a very informative and interesting tour. Many thanks to the Garden Club for opening their doors and providing this tour. When you're in St. Simon Island you gotta go to the lighthouse. And the good news is the lighthouse is right across from where we're staying at the Ocean Inn and Suites. And it's open at 10 o'clock every day except Sundays where it opens at noon and looks like it closes at 5. Tickets are $12 for adults, which allows you to climb the lighthouse and also provide you with a tour of the keeper's home. We climb to the top. Keep going, you can do it. And we took breaks along the way to enjoy the view. It says here 24 steps to go. All right, so for the final steps, you go through this door that's open. Hold on, don't lose your footing. And before you know it, you'll be up at the top. <coughs> Look at this view. So we're staying right over there at the Ocean Inn Suites. I mean, literally across the street from the lighthouse. You can see it right there, that brown building. And from up here, you have a view of the river, the bridge off there. I think that's Jekyll Island over there. So after enjoying the views from the top, we took a self-guided tour of the Keeper's Home. Yeah. That was definitely worth it. I'd say the lighthouse is a must-see when you come to St. Simon's Island. Would you agree? Yes, I would. Now that's a wrap. And next week, we'll give you some suggestions on where to eat when visiting St. Simon's Island. But as you go around the island, keep a lookout for the tree spirits. Until next time. Safe travels.